Well, hello, my friends. In this video, we're going to examine an overview of bullying and social aggression. Uh, I like this little caption which says, only the best are bullied. Uh, if you've ever been bullied, then that means you're the best. I really like that. Uh, what is bullying? A student is bullied or victimized when he or she is exposed repeatedly and over time. Now note that repeatedly and over time to negative actions on the part of one or more students. Uh, bullying is characterized by repeated behavior which is carried on over time. Bullying is characterized by three criteria. Bullying is aggressive behavior or intentional harm doing. Bullying is carried out repeatedly and over time. And bullying occurs within an interpersonal relationship characterized by an imbalance of power. Now I want you as you look at this to understand that bullying can occur in school. Bullying can occur on the job. Bullying can occur, occur in the family. Bullying can occur at church. Bullying can occur at a mosque. Bullying occurs when there is intentional harm doing that is repeated behavior that is conducted over time and it is interpersonal, occurs in interpersonal relationships characterized by an imbalance of power. There are types of bullying. The first of these is direct bullying, and direct bullying is a relatively open attack on a victim. Uh, bullying can be physical or verbal in nature. Physical attacks may include such things as hitting, kicking, pushing, or choking. Verbal attacks or harassment can be just as, just as hard. Things like name-calling, threatening, toning, malicious teasing, rumor spreading, and slandering. Those all constitute direct bullying. Indirect bullying is more subtle and may be more difficult to detect. Uh, indirect bullying may be things like social isolation where you have intentional exclusion, making faces, obscene gestures, manipulating friendship relationships. Uh, those things are social isolation which are characterized by indirect bullying. So you see from this that bullying may be direct bullying and there may be indirect bullying. When you think about the bullying that you've experienced, it will fall into one of these two categories, and both are extremely harmful. The risk factors for bullying peers uh, are listed, we're going to go through now, and they're listed below in just a moment, but an individual or familial peer and school factors can place a youth at risk for participating in bullying factors. At this point, we are not talking about the bullied we are talking about risk factors for being the bully. Uh, generally, boys, first of all, are much more likely to engage in bullying behavior than girls. Now let that sink in for a moment. Uh, that doesn't mean that girls won't be bullies. It just means that boys are more likely to be bullies than girls. I can think of numerous girls that are very much engaged in bullying behavior. Girls who bully are less likely to be physically abusive than boys are. In other words, when girls bully, their bullying may be direct bullying, it may be toning, name calling, all of those things, or may be indirect bullying with social isolation. Although most bullying occurs between students in the same grade, older students sometimes bully younger students. Now, and this is talking about in the school setting. In the church setting, you may find that, that the older bully the younger. You may find in, in a, a home setting that the older may bully the younger. In fact, sometimes the younger will bully the older. All sorts of things can happen. Now, the individual risk factors for bullying peers include this. First of all, impulsive, hot-headed, dominant personality lacking empathy. Empathy, of course, meaning that you can feel for what the other person is experiencing. Uh, another risk factor it would include difficulty conforming to rules and low frustration tolerance, uh, positive attitudes towards violence, physically aggressive behavior, and a gradually decreasing interest in school or achievement. Now, family risk factors for being a bully include lack of parental warmth and involvement. The most important part of uh, influence on a child, much research shows, is indeed the parents. And if the parents are not warm and they don't have any involvement with the child, then the child has risk for becoming a bully. Uh, overly permissive or excessively harsh discipline 
and physical punishments by the parents. A lot of research shows that you have to find a, a balance that you maintain that, that if you're overly permissive or you're overly harsh, then you may uh, bring about a situation where your child is more at risk for, for bullying their peers. Lack of parental supervision. Peer risk factors also involve friends or peers with positive attitudes towards violence. Uh, sometimes if we run with a certain group, we're going to behave like that certain group. And then exposure to models of bullying. The more you have been exposed to something, may have been victimized by it, then the more likely you are to participate in it. School risk factors for bullying peers include the following. Now, you can put these down and you can talk about church risk factors, mosque risk factors, wherever a child is in an organization. If you have a lack of supervision during breaks, then you have more uh, opportunity for bullies to participate in a bullying behavior. Uh, for instance, in the lunch rooms, playgrounds, hallways, locker rooms, and bathrooms. Unsupervised interactions between different grade levels during breaks makes it uh, really increases the chance of bullying. And indifferent or accepting teacher attitudes towards bullying. Sometimes uh, teachers kind of think, well, I, I just won't get involved. Well, let me tell you, if you're an adult and you witness bullying, you need to get involved. Don't just turn the blind eye. Put yourself in the position of the one doing the bullying. Put yourself in the position of the one being bullied. And understand that both suffer from the bullying behavior in this teacher. You need to intervene. Now, indifferent or accepting student attitudes towards bullying. If we are willing to let students just have an indifferent attitude at school, then bullying is more likely to occur. Now, what this means is, is that if you can convince a student population that bullying is unacceptable, then those students are more likely to, to put a, a, a stop to bullying behavior. But if you just let them, don't, don't intervene at all, and they're indifferent towards it, then it's more likely to occur. Inconsistent enforcement of rules. And I will tell you right up front, being consistent is critical. It doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter where you're from, these are the rules and they need to be enforced fairly. Risk factors for being bullied by your peers include the following. Now we were looking at uh, the risk factors for being the bully. Now here are the risk factors that you may be vict uh, the victim of the bully. Uh, both boys and girls are more likely to be victimized by boys. Now we think of bullying sometimes we think, well, boys bully boys. Well, boys bully girls too. Girls can bully boys, but it's more likely that the boys will be doing the bullying than the girls, even though girls can do it. And then we need to remember that if bullying is occurring, it can be, a, be a targeting both boys and girls who can be victimized. Younger and weaker students are most likely to be bullied. Oh, the, the bully wants to have a position of power. Therefore, the bully is more likely to go against those that are less likely to retaliate. And a, and a younger child or a weaker student is going to be more likely the object of bullying. Individual risk factors include a cautious, sensitive, insecure personality, difficulty asserting themselves with peers, physical weakness, particularly in boys. You, you're, you're a small body frame. You're not able to take care, to stand up and, 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 and defend yourself against the big bully. And family risk factors include overprotection by parents. And I put possibly, but uh, when, when parents uh, uh, step in too much and, and don't allow kids to, to be able to stand on their own feet, they put their kids at risk for being victims of bullies. Peer risk factors include a lack of close friends. Now, I want you to look at the individual risk factors, the family risk factors, and the peer risk factors for the, the risk of being bullied by your peers, a cautious, cautious, sensitive, insecure personality, physical weakness, overprotection by parents, and lack of close friends. You probably have some, some young people that come to mind when you read this. Now, the school risk factors include presence of aggressive students in the same or slightly higher grade. Uh, lack of supervision during breaks. And I have to tell you, supervision is key to withstanding bullying. Indifferent or accepting teacher attitudes towards bullying and indifferent or accepting student attitudes towards bullying. 
if teachers and other students are willing to close a blind eye, then bullying will occur. An uneven, inconsistent enforcement of rules. Again, let me rehash for you, it's very important that rules be fairly, justly, and evenly enforced for all students involved. I want to thank you very much for your, your patronage. We'll have a series of these videos. This is the first. Uh, I remind you that it is your patronage that keeps my family fed. And in the, in the words of the Hunger Games, may the odds be ever in your favor. And of course, I mean that unless you and I are trapped in the same event, then it's every man for himself. You have a good day.